So here in viewports, what I want to do is I want to create a ring rail since we're making a ring. So the ring rail right here, if we click on that, you'll see a curve on the screen. Um, it'll automatically place it into the right position or the right viewport. So if you look at it in the front view, the ring rail is kind of supposed to give us the finger size. So it's positioned in the front view so that when we create the ring, it'll create it in the right orientation. So the ring rail, what we want to do now is select the finger size we want to create this ring in. So here in the right, in the dynamic commands, um, we can click this here and we can change the finger size. So whatever you like. So we have quarter sizes. So let's go and start maybe with a size 6. If you are watching this video and you live in a different region and you guys don't use the US standard for finger sizes, we can use other ones. So the UK, China, Europe, or if you know, let's say the diameter of the finger, we can just type in the diameter in millimeters or inches. So we're quite flexible with that. After you've set the uh, finger size, we can hit enter or we can right click on the mouse and that will uh, apply the settings. So now I hit enter, now we have a ring rail. Now a ring rail is a curve. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to build the ring around this. So next thing we need is something called a profile. So we're going to click on that ring rail and I'm going to click on F6, which is, or for matrix it's F6. We're going to go into the context menu and that's going to be the center scroll bu button. So if I click down on the center scroll button, you'll get the context menu. And again, this will change depending on what you're selecting. So if I hit if I click on the screen and it unselects the ring rail, the context menu does change. I click on the ring rail and then these are the tools that I can use on the ring rail. So what we're going to do now is do something called a profile placer. Click on that and we get another curve. So if I right click on the screen, I'll be able to rotate it. So And if I zoom in with the scroll button, so scroll up, I can zoom into it and then zoom out. Um, if you want to move uh, the object so it's a for some reason it's out here on the right you can right click on the mouse while holding sh the shift key on the keyboard and we can pan it over okay so let me just go through that one more time so we can without clicking it on the keyboard right click and drag will rotate zooming in on the uh, using the scroll button you can zoom in and zoom out or you can hold shift right mouse button and we can pan and drag it around the screen okay so i'm going to rotate this to an angle that i like and we'll click on this profile picker so here we have a couple pre-made profiles so i'm going to go with profile 16 close this and here uh, we can adjust the profile width and profile height so I want to create a band. It doesn't really matter if you're following along what uh, your width and heights are as long as you understand that if you're doing a ring that's two millimeters wide, you got to change this to two millimeters, right? Or if you're working on a band that's three millimeters, we just move slide this out so it's three millimeters. Now, um, if the band is three millimeters finished, you always want to add 0 0.1 to 0 0.2 um, even 0.3 millimeters um, thickness to the finished thickness because when the jeweler grinds, polishes, it's always going to be a little bit thinner. So if the band is supposed to be finished at 3 millimeters, you want to put make it like 3.1 to 3.3. If it's 2 millimeters, you want to do 2.1 to 2.3. Okay. Um, for this, just to make things a bit simple, I'm just going to make it 2 millimeters and the height um, let's say 1.8 and same thing if you want to have the height 1.8 on the finished product you want to add um, a bit of metal to it so you want to make it maybe two millimeters okay so let's go 1.8 enter and now I have two curves okay so one is a profile curve and one is the ring rail curve and these are dynamic commands so you'll see a listing here in the dynamic commands list. Uh, you'll see the ring rail and profile placer. 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to sweep the ring to create the band itself. So you're going to click on the ring rail, and then you're going to click the middle mouse button, and go to the context menu, and from the context menu we're going to do something called a sweep 1. And you'll see there's a lightning bolt, so that's um, part of the dynamic history, and it'll appear in the dynamic commands. Click on sweep 1, and then if you look at the uh, command line, it usually will tell you, like if you click a command and you do something, the command line will usually tell you what uh, to do next. So I clicked sweep 1 with the lightning bolt, and now in the command line it says select profiles. So we have one profile here, which is this yellow curve. You're going to click on that and then hit enter or right mouse button and it'll do something called a sweep and it'll create the ring. Now here in the sweep in the dynamic commands you have a sweep one kind of menu so we'll go through this later but because it's a simple band there's nothing we really need to do here all you need to do now is hit enter and we've created our first ring. So if you want to see the ring in a more solid um, render we can go to display modes and click on the second one which is shaded and then we can see it in a shaded view or let's say you want to see it in rendered you can do a quick display render and kind of see what it looks like and then we'll go over how to render in different materials later so that's uh, the first band um, and I would say go through the video again and then give it a try see you in the next video